Does that mean it's me or you? <laughs> I, I think it's me. I just I'm looking on stream and we haven't appeared yet, so I'm like, I don't know. Should I be going right now? Can they you hear go. us? You Welcome go. to BattleTech, uh, gentlemen of list. This is session six. I am here in order to ruin everybody's lives. Let me be clear. I had a stream directly before this that was a disaster. I am here to get revenge. I want to kill the players on purpose. I'm a bad guy. I'm the bad guy. And if there was a dog to kill in game, I would shoot the dog just to prove how bad I am today. I am AP Gaming Real and I'm the bad guy. And normally you guys are each other's worst enemies. So I feel like I really need to emphasize that you need to be shooting at me so you don't accidentally shoot each other. But speaking of the people that you shouldn't be shooting, let's go through everyone and see who we're not shooting, starting with Bob. All right, um, my name is Bob, aka Pascal Larue. Um, Bob m may not be shot today. I think. I think I've got a pretty good odds against that, but uh, we'll find out with Pascal what happens here. Um, I'd also like to note that uh, Pascal is not a bad guy. Just because he's a bad guy, he's not a bad guy. So, um, yeah. Anyways, I'll pass it on. I love AP's I, I broke of AP with such that. dubious, yeah. dubious <laughs> confusion. Not a bad guy? <laughs> I think we all know uh, Pascal's a bad guy, let's be honest. So, Bob, let's have you choose who to pass, pass the uh, fortune. Alright, Mark. Hello, I am Mark, aka the Catch Me Out, and today I'll be playing Rahul Chestang, who is a bad guy. Uh, he is a uh, uh, noble criminal. Noble as in elite, not as in nice. Um, is yeah, he smooth uh, and uh, judging by past experiences in this game, not particularly. <laughs> we'll see how things go moving forward, though. Uh, and I'm ready to hopefully not get blown up, but I am in uh, the, the biggest mech uh, with a lot of armor and a lot of missiles, so we'll see. And hello, I am Thomas, uh, playing Louis Gabrielson. Uh, he, uh, morality is a chain uh, used by, used by fool. Absolutely. Uh, hello, I am Thomas. I'll be playing Louis Gabrielson. Uh, and I am at risk at being shot. I am in the smallest mech with the lowest armor and no explosives, but I am right next to the person f we are fighting. Uh, and as for if he's good or bad, mm, I don't know. He could be better. What an episode uh, title. He could be better. He could be better. <laughs> Anyway, if you're going to kill that dog, I'm going to save that dog. That's not how being shot with lasers works. You don't just un-be shot by lasers, usually. Tonight, I'll be playing the Force of the Opposition, a monk by the name of Zhen Yu, who works for Warrior House Kamada, one of the Capellan Confederation's warrior house units which are trained mech warriors who also pledge themselves to a code of conduct these guys are pledged to a sort of lucky buddha lifestyle unfortunately they're super pissed that you invaded their home world and uh, have also been rampantly looting them after a discussion in which you continuously infuriated mocked and dishonored this man he finally decided that he was going to take his massive battle fists and crush the tiny raven and all of you we got his name wrong once. <laughs> that's that's wanted, what happened. I wanted on record, I was very respectful, and all I basically did was say, I am not the commander. This is the commander. <laughs> and then the commander... Yep, so really, really... <laughs> I, I, I hope so. Um, but really, it's his fault. Exactly. Okay. That's what Bob, we're going to on the report. I have mixed news for you. All right. So I rolled a four. He has a tactics of one. So I have a five now. 
The bad news is that you have a minus one to this roll. If you win, he moves first. And if he wins, all of you move before he moves. You do want to win. Oh, yeah. Got this lovely 2d6 button that you can press over here. Yeah, you're flipping on OBS. Yeah. For the folks at home, we're playing Battletech Alpha Strike, possibly for the second time. It's going to be a pretty fast battle, considering that our, our good allied forces have about triple this guy's point value. Uh, you want to hit it at least twice so that it induces at least three degrees of motion. Which is to say, it will rotate the dice. Well, we no, no, no. We don't need to say the yeah. number out loud. We could just say that you won. We don't. No, don't take a victory lap on that one. <laughs> the number is eleven. We're happy. Um, that said, him going before me is bad. <laughs> it is. It is actually bad for him. He I, cannot I declare a melee attack against someone who has yet to move yet. So his intended know. plan to crush you with his massive fist is now non-functional and uh it, there's no there's no shot that he can do it because he has to move before you even if you stand next to him he has to declare it by the end of his movement so the fact that you haven't you haven't moved yet means it is impossible for him to attack you in that way now he can still shoot you of course by there's hitting no us he can still shoot us yeah. in the face yes he is going to retrograde by jumping eight inches. Uh, he's going to arrive right here. So his mech is literally rising into the air on columns of nuclear flame. All the waste hate from his engine is being forced out of nozzles all around his mech. And truly 80 tons of metal begins soaring through the air like some sort of fallout uh cut scene where you accidentally start a gunfight in a crowded street in a fallout game and one of the fusion engines is still working and and like the car lifts off into the air from the force of an explosion it's like that but controlled by an enemy all of you get to move now all right before we do i have a question what is the distance yes. for long range so, all of the distances are in the lower right-hand corner down here on this chart. Long range is 24 to 42 inches, which is measured by holding tab to move your... So, it's about two feet. This is the radius of long range. It's pretty long. Okay, good to know. That's the inner radius. The outer radius is basically the other side of the table. Yeah. And this is your archer right here. So, 24 inches is way behind this guy. I think it's a good idea. I would recommend the shooty people go first. Yes, so you can choose to jump instead, uh, which makes it more difficult for you to shoot, but it also makes it harder for you to be hit. And 8J means you can ignore any terrain between you and your target location. So for instance, if you had to walk over a hill like this guy did in the process, normally he'd have to pay to go up the hill twice, but because when you jump, you just move a ruler's eight inches in any direction, he ignores all those costs. You have to pay to move down a hill or just go up? You So, um, the blackjack is in, a, is in trouble over here because not only do you have to pay to go up and down a hill, but this is terrain that has been damaged. These are the cracked foundations of the streets that have been damaged by the flooding. And so you have to pay an extra inch anytime you move anywhere for every one inch you move. So you're paying double movement costs. 
Uh, and yes, you do have to pay to move down and up an extra inch. Okay. So getting off of the city foundations there is uh, is pricey. Good job. So twenty four. Exactly. No, the script the script joke was last time. We gotta come up with a new meme, guys. We have a new joke. We pre-rolled huh? all the rolls. Indeed. Everything's been prepared. We're just using time. a notepad for all of the pre-rolled <laughs> rolls. That said, we can't have more than one joke. That's impossible. Jokes have to be done in sets of threes, alright? I know how comedy works. I've seen Game Changer. <laughs> Is that eight inches? Seven. Just way farther than eight inches for the blackjack. That's like... Yeah, eight inches is like right here. Oh, almost fell over. This battle for shit show, and uh, we haven't actually technically made our move. All right, movement has been made. So we do it individually, right? Like he moves, then he does the shooty shooty business, and then another. Yeah. Person. So, what happens is, uh, it's you you alternate turns, right? But because there's only one person on his side, it's all for all or nothing. Whichever yeah. side wins, initiative moves second. Period. End of story. Um. It would be different if there were more combatants. Fold mm -hmm. tab. Yeah. So to move up to this level, it will be one extra inch. Yes. Yes. So the Raven has a movement rating of ten. Uh, does it cost movement to rotate? Uh, no. You can choose whatever way you want to face at the end of your move. What's going on with my computer? The water here is, is the only water that is deep enough for that to matter is the water minus three level. That water right there is not deep enough to matter. If you do land in in anything labeled water minus three, it's deep enough that it requires a additional uh, one inch to move through. If I go here, he can just jump on me, which I kind of want to avoid. But I think Chad is saying they can't hear people. They can't hear you, Bob. Oh, what happened? I, I listened and I could hear us. Sure. I am relaying the words of Twitch chat. Talk to us, Bob. Hallowed be his name. Thank you very Talk much to for us, Bob. the notice. I'm so frustrated, but I'm here. And yeah, we haven't done that much yet. So not the end of the world. It's Talk probably when we Dad. cut over... <laughs> Probably only when we cut over to the tabletop simulator, since uh, OBS refuses to use my microphone. And so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, I'm back. Thank you. Appreciate that. That's why we do games live. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Uh. Y you know okay. what? Uh, uh, I. Yeah. I how much of this? AP, do you want us to be in or out of character for when we're like strategizing as a group? Do you want to in character? I think that's your call. Okay. I think I think uh, Pascal will just say we don't need to give this thing uh, one target at a time. If it takes us uh, a bit longer to surround it, let's do it. Uh, could I potentially? shoot then move or do i have to move then shoot you shoot in the second phase so it's after moving understood uh in that case 
I would like to... See, I understand. What you want to do is you want to shoot him and then not be shot yourself, but that's not yes. how being shot works. Yes. Fair enough, fair enough. I understand. Battletech I... has spoiled you with the ability to reserve so that you can take a I double know. turn. Yeah. I know. I wouldn't do that. Uh, if he goes full throttle on you, you're toast. Yeah, he can shoot yeah. me a bunch. Yeah. I want... I think you have the least armored of our... Man. I am so lightly armored. Yeah. I am I am the weakest I think, guy. How fast are you? Fast? Uh, ten movements. Okay. So uh, I guess the terrain sucks for you, but if you can kind of leverage that for one round, maybe maybe we can get into a point where we're surrounding him, or he's gonna go backwards, which will make our life harder. If you can, yeah. If you could get behind him, it would limit his mm. movements coming forward. I think yes. I think I'm probably going to try to rush over to this grassland with the intent so you, to... With going up and then down, you're only going to have 8 inches of movement. Rather than that's fine, because that'll bring me okay. here. No? No. It will bring me here. No, oh, no! I uh, will the point out, the Blackjack cannot see the victor and neither oh, can the Raven. I had, I had no uh, means of yes. seeing him anyways this round from what okay. I got. Yeah. I do have a means of seeing him, but also it would result in me dying quite badly. Oh, what's happening? Look, Chloe, you got some tanky as fuck. When you Indeed. run, does it make you harder to hit too, AP? If, you're just if, like you, if you sprint, you yeah. cannot shoot. You could sprint, Thomas, just to like be the road runner, make him chase after <laughs> And maybe be a distraction. I think that wouldn't be a bad idea because I can't shoot from here. I do have a question for you guys, though. Uh, has my camera stopped? Because my computer seems to be I see you just not responsive. Down. Okay, cool. Uh, what does sprinting do? Let me check the rules. Sorry, what was the question? Uh, what does sprinting, sprinting do? You move 1.5 times as far, but you can't shoot. Sweet. I think that's what I'll do, because I've moved 10 at this point. Okay. Uh, water level 3 is a problem, right? Yep. Uh, then I can move... Another 5 mm, inches. Which means if I go up and down from here... You're not going to be able to go up and down. You can go yeah, and up, not to four, up to four inches, yeah. The move, the going down part is what's getting you. Yeah. Oh, why, why would you stop Yeah, me? so you arrive in his rear, but you can't shoot him because, again, you're sprinting. You're literally... This thing doesn't have arms. You're literally just full throttle, like, sticking your nose out as far forward as possible, like a runner, I'm, and just I'm, shoulder yes. shrugging. I'm, I'm Naruto running with the Raven mech. No, no... No. <laughs> no. AP has regretted this decision. I just explained earlier today why Naruto was dumb in great detail, and Indeed. I don't want to do it again. But yes, uh, Louis over the comms, and his job here is mostly muting his comms and making sure that ours works. He's <laughs> saying, going full throttle. Sounds like you played the Mech Commander video game and know about ambient dialogue. <laughs> Minimal damage. Bad. <laughs> All right. Well, that that right there was BattleTech ambient dialogue in the background. But uh, okay. All right. So let's see here. I am 18 inches from the archer, which is medium range. My skill rating is two, so I have uh, two, and then I jumped, which means I have a plus two to hit. It's a total of six. Your archer moved. According to your archer's card, you have a TMM of one, so I need a seven to hit you. For four damage, medium range. That's a solid hit. Wow. So let me lock the cards to the table so you can draw on them. Wait, let me double check. And yep, those are the numbers you're supposed to roll. Yes. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, so you're marking out four of your armor bubbles. This is the white bubbles. Right. So you lose half the armor on your mech immediately as this guy goes absolutely apeshit with autocannon rounds. So I know autocannon 
gives you the idea of like a Gao 8 Avenger from a A10 Warthog like or like a like the guns from Top Gun, right? Just a really super fast firing gun. That's not how it works in Battletech. It's like two or three very rapid shots with huge caliber weapons the size of trash cans uh, that then stop and reload for several seconds. So, yeah, this guy's lasers, all sorts of things firing, and then as huge explosions hit your mech, your missile racks. So you basically have, like, rabbit ears filled with missiles. Those missile racks are locked closed until the missiles are there, and, like, you're getting ready to open them, and you're like, ah, I'm getting hit like that guy from Platoon. <laughs> <laughs> or a Power Ranger. The only other... <laughs> Oh, Power Rangers. Oh. Well, Power Rangers would be like, ah, 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 ah. the punnies got me. I believe the only person who can shoot is our archer can fire back. Yep. Um, so you have a skill rating of, of missiles. Close. You have a skill rating of four. You are at a range where you are looking at a plus two. He has a TMM of one. So because he moved, he gets TMM. Because he jumped, he gets uh, another plus one to it. So you're mm -hmm. looking at eight to hit. Eight to hit, all right. I think, yep, that sounds right, eight to hit. Now before that, don't look at the dice. Don't look at the dice. I didn't look. Okay, you can choose to overheat your archer to do an additional point of damage. And what that means uh -oh. is that if you do that, if you hit while overheating, you do the, well. You take the penalty for overheating, no matter what. Yeah. It is a stacking penalty that adds up in the future to all of your rolls, like making it more and more difficult. And you have to spend a whole turn not shooting to make it burn off. Okay, uh, I won't this round. Okay. Did you get an eight? You did. You got an eleven. You hit him for three points of damage as your missiles swarm over him. A, a brace of four medium lasers reaches out and hits over the front end of his mech. Just like for a brief one second, like four green beams like slash over him. And he's like, eh, puny damage. And then he sees like this massive leap. The missiles seem to hang in the air for a second. Like they instantly leap up and look over him. But because of the way that the, the angle of the camera works, as they're diving towards them, they appear to be hanging in the air. And so not until the last second is he, like, blasted by missiles over two dozen slamming into his mech all over the place. He's like, uh, 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 ah! <laughs> nice. Well done. How's that for firepower? All right. Uh, I, got a, I got a question for you, AP, before we continue. Yes. Are we, what is the etiquette? Cause this is more like probably what Louis aware of. He's a, he's a lot smarter than he is ready for this kind of role. What is the etiquette to assigning a battlefield commander when you are in a role of authority like this? Would that be seen as inappropriate? Is it a it's a little late to do that now that okay. the battle has started. Okay. You know what okay. I mean? That sort of yeah. thing needs to be arranged. Okay. Discussed ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. Well, Absolute to be fair. Chaos. I understand yeah. you don't want to fail this role that you suck at. Yeah, yeah. 100%. I get it. It's unfortunate, then, that you've been promoted to a position of leadership despite a complete lack of skills. It's true. It's true. That is an eight. All for right. my initiative. Uh, that is a plus. seven. Seven. Oh, Wait, he, oh has, he has a minus a one. Minus yeah. minus yeah. one. Right. <laughs> yep. Nothing personal, kid. Nothing personal, <laughs> kid. All right, that means we go first for move, right? That's correct. All three of you will move before he moves. And if anyone uh, is within eight inches of him, you potentially a target either for him to jump next to you and melee attack you, or he could just decide to jump on your mech and land on you. He'll deal damage to his legs, and he'll basically decapitate you in the process. Yes. That's a very good point. Allow me to put my guy down, and then I'm going to measure from there. That's called a death from above maneuver. Yes. 
I think I'm fine. I think I'm nine inches away. <laughs> That's I concur. Okay. Yeah, oh, shit. That's gonna complicate things. Hmm. My laptop has now gone to a completely black screen, but things are still working, right? <laughs> that's worrisome, though. <laughs> yeah, but that shouldn't be happening. <laughs> it, it shouldn't be happening, and I can't actually press any buttons, and control alt deleting hasn't done anything, but is the camera still working? Because Discord, still working. like, okay, excellent. If but the I... time comes for me to look at my character sheet, I'll log on on my desktop, which is behind my laptop. Right now, this is just a webcam. It's, it's a human camera. <laughs> camera only. Um, only cam. Um, all right. Only so, cam. Only cam. Uh, I, I think, I mean, I understand the situation here, but uh, there's not a lot of options. Louis going to go here. Yeah. I'm going to be very limited coming up, so I hope you guys can survive. Do I need to turn my mech here for the jump? Yeah, yeah you're absolutely super murderable from there. There's plenty of pos so what front and back is determined by halfway through your mech. So if he lands like right here and faces you, he can shoot you in the back for plus one damage. Right. Okay. Or he How can melee I you in the back for plus one damage. That would be devastating. Right. Yeah. There we go. Hopefully this will work. Okay, I would have to get in the water to do that. Yeah. Okay. Not calm. Ugh, still on okay. way. Yeah, not long. That's my turn. This is comms officer Louis Gabrielson. Would you consider surrender? <laughs> Let's see here. Hmm. He is going to open communications and say, Am I correct in remembering that the pilot of your blackjack is the commander of your unit. You would be correct. Okay. Speaking Just... to my communications officer. <laughs> this is a large group call. They can all hear stuff. Uh, you just hear Rahul over the, the audio. Oh no! From that? You already knew. It's death from above time. Oh, he is yeah. at, it actually yeah. will he does the same damage at this so if he could move his full eight inches it would be different but since you're only six inches from him if rather than risk taking damage from death from above he's just gonna land next to you and punch you okay. i can still see and that it'll do the same damage uh let's look from your model's perspective i i can see he definitely has cover from you, for sure. But I can see him. You can see him, for sure. Okay, for sure, that's for all sure. I need to know. No <laughs> doubt, no of, doubt. But you have heard of me. <laughs> I Listen, I was saying that scene while I was opening my garage door yesterday, and I didn't realize there was someone like coming up to like shill their lawn service. So they heard me say that line while I'm alone in my garage, like, opening my car door. And he was like, who are you talking to? And I was like, my cat. I was talking to my cat. Indeed. I've been in that position before. I've just been saying something to myself in a silly voice, and people have gone, who are you talking to? Well, all of you get to shoot first before he shoots. Although, to be clear, it all resolves at the same time at the end of the turn. Yeah. I will shoot him with my rhythm stick. Can I, I try to kick him? My rocket. <laughs> he is within 10 for that medium range, which is a plus 2, and he's moved. Yep. Uh, what am I trying to hit? So you have a 4... You move this round, you're at medium range, is a plus two for six. He gives you a plus two for TMM, is eight. Right, so I have to hit eight on 2d6. Yep. 
Uh, mind if I roll? Please do. Go for it. I'm not gonna stop you. That uh, is a hit. Nine. Um, the raven swivels slightly, legs remaining static, and then there's a <laughs> uh, as I shoot past uh, Pascal. You strip the last of the armor off of his mech. It's now if you've if you've played the uh, MechWarrior online, he's at the point where like there's sparks coming out of his mech. Any hit from here on out could cause a critical hit on his structure, and once the structure is gone, he's fully dead. Mander, I recommend getting clear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, well, that's me. you. You got two shooses for who's acting next. Melee is technically range. done last, so it has to be the long range shooter. All right. You do have to choose between shooting or doing melee, by the way. Oh yeah. Uh, also, you can't you can't declare a melee attack, Bob, because you you have to declare a melee attack at the end of your movement, and he was not standing next to you when that happened. I just said. Yep. Yeah. I don't think that would have worked well, anyways. <laughs> yeah. Let's go with uh, let's go with Rebel though. He's got the longer shot. All right. Yep. So yep, long range missiles. And he is partial cover for plus one. So you start at a four. Long range is plus four for eight. Partial cover is plus one for nine. You get plus two for his movement and jumping. Yeah. Which should be eleven. Eleven. Okay, uh, for this one, I'm going to overheat. Okay. Still need an 11, but if you hit, you will deal 4 damage. Oh, I don't get a bonus for it. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah, I'm this isn't a good time to be mind. overheating, I think. I'm good. Yeah. It's so way less likely you're going to hit. You get a 3 and 36 chance to hit or something like that. Let's go then. That's a go. Hey. Oh, God. So close, so close, but no. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> the missiles yeah. slam into that hillside that he's silhouetting off of, and uh, he doesn't even notice you're shooting at him. All right, Bob. What does he think I'm shooting at? The country, son? All right. Well, I have no choice but to. The... Now, my lasers, which are basically my arms on this mech. Uh, yep. They can hit at short range, right? Yep. Uh, um, you could try to overheat. I'm gonna overheat. Yeah, I got. It's all or nothing at this point. Yeah. Mm. Let's do it. So mm. you're looking at four. You moved. He jumped for plus two, so six. You're looking to hit a six for three damage. Oh. Yeah. No bueno. Every part of you is ready for this moment. You've backed up against a cliff. You know he's coming. You see him soaring through the air. You also don't really have arms. You've got two hunched laser cannons instead of arms. You see him coming. It's such an easy target. He's coming down so slowly. You see the missiles coming towards you in the background around the hill. And you're like, my own men are firing at me. You lose. You waver slightly. Your lasers just go slightly out of focus you miss him and you just keep slamming the button to fire them over and over again overheating yourself but still missing you need to yeah. fill in this one column here on your overheat scale all 80 tons of him lands next to you and tries to kick you there is a pretty reasonable chance that that will miss he is a two he has a plus two for jumping as long as your TMM is higher than one, it's not, though. Your TMM is not higher than one. Okay, he does hit you for four points of damage. Ooh -wee. Yeah. Which takes almost all of your armor. Yep. And you are now... It is impossible for you to escape him. You have the same movement speed. You literally cannot escape him beating you to death. Your only hope is to win initiative. Well... That's uh, where we're back at again, right? Indeed. Yep. Initiative of six. That's not great. That's not great. You got a 50% chance to tie. Six. Tie. You did, you did <laughs> tie. <It's> tie. <laughs> Roll two. 
I have a four. <laughs> That's so much worse. Okay. Hey. I am forced to move first, which is chaotically bad. I am going to dip myself completely underwater so that I can't be seen. Oh. Um, I have a quick question. He might evade our visual range. Does he evade my senses? No. You know where he is. Now, it should be noted, he can't jump back out of this water. He will have to walk up to shore if he's coming back. Uh, being underwater means that his jump jet thrusters no longer work in the same way flamethrowers don't work underwater. Mm -hmm. Classically. Classic flamethrower water situation. If you've ever seen the... Uh, the instructional movie Braveheart. It's also why bullets don't work underwater or arrows. Uh, how are we for lasers underwater? The same, exact same problem. Uh, yeah, underwater is really sh shooting underwater <laughs> is a no no in BattleTech. It's really more of you need tor punchers or a Umu's underwater maneuvering unit. Mm. So I'll tell you here, unless you want to chase him into the water and fight him in melee combat, the one area he will easily beat all of your asses in, he is going to withdraw from the area by walking underwater in the river until he gets to the other side. Which none of you can chase him because, again, he is almost as fast as all of you and also has jump jets. Indeed. So he can ignore bad terrain. If you want to chase after him underwater, we can do this, and you can engage him in melee combat underwater. To be clear, engaging in melee combat underwater is very bad for everybody involved. Yes. Yeah. So you will flood your mech in the process. I will say I am faster than him. I will also say that running after him in melee combat is not a good prospect for the teensy little raven. Um, Louis is going to uh, connect to the rest of the lance, and he's going to say, "All mechs be advised." You guys, um, he's retreating through the water. Uh, I can still get a bead on him, and I will be able to as long as he's connected to the net. But uh, I don't believe any of us are equipped for pursuit. Stand down. We'll let him go this time. Understood. As as uh. <laughs> His blackjack is basically smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Move one back. By the time your unit treats back to base, including uh, what's this guy's name? Or is Irwin? Uh, hold on, the... let me. I I wrote it down somewhere. Yeah, I I normally get yeah. his name off of it. Ernst Zimmer. His name is Lance Corporal yes. Ernst Zimmer. I normally get it from his token, but we are on the wrong map, so I don't have his token available. So Ernst, you finally get him sobbing up from his hunchback. If you'll recall, he laid down to block the water from getting further into the city, and then he couldn't get back up again. Now, I know this makes it seem like this guy's really pathetic and bad at piloting mechs, but the person who piloted this mech just died like six hours ago, and it normally takes a full week of practice, like eight hours a day to adjust to a new mech and this guy has to do it in like six hours through a thunderstorm while providing life-saving uh you know disaster relief care so you know he's he has a headache he has a migraine from his brain not worky right indeed i, I will know too um before the before our audience gets to this point, not only did he manage to lay on the ground successfully for the last round, he also managed to instigate by pointing his weapons at the enemy, uh, thus further escalating the issue. Ah, yes, yes, yes. While course, lying on the ground, a master class of, um, <laughs> his, you know, Pascal's got at least one person he can look down at coming in, in, out of this fight. So there we go. Well, all of you are generally the same rank except for this guy. In terms of military ranks, he he yeah. is the one person who is lower ranked than all of you. Yeah. yeah. The archer and the blackjack are coming back, truly missing enormous amounts of armor, with not a lot to show for it. 
chasing off three three experienced mech warriors chasing off one guy. Uh, I mean, this is a sound victory politically, public relations wise, you know. Probably somebody on the base is already spinning it as, you know, like drunk lone monk warrior shows up while kind hearted Capellan hunk gentleman twinks are providing disaster relief for beflooded people. Um, you know, we've got all of these cuts of Louis Gabriel and uh, a comms officer who's calmly redirecting people. And uh, we've got, like, Rahul superiorly, coldly, precisely working things out with people. Pascal issuing all the, like, strategic orders. All of that's going to play very well over the radio. And then there's this guy who's like, you got beef with me? You want to fight, bro? You're, you're on our planet, man. Like, <laughs> with selective editing, they can make this guy look like a buffoon. Um... That said, the people who pay to repair your mechs are upset that your mechs are so damaged and you don't have an enemy mech to bring back to turn into spare parts. And there's also a pal over the base. Someone was recently brutally murdered. There's a completely unsolved case of uh, stolen guns. Then there's the We're second that. There's the second <laughs> unsolved case of the stolen guns magically appearing. It would have taken, a, you know, three guys. Some people say it would have taken a dozen guys to carry that case. And yet they appeared, placed it, and vanished while a full squad of the most superior, best infantry on the whole base security team didn't even see them. The, whoever did this, whatever elite team did this, is a ghost trained by a capella in Maskarovka. We can't say what their motivations were, or, <laughs> yeah, like, course. yeah, but, like, I mean, they seem to help very sneakily, and we don't know why. <laughs> no, it was a flex, right? They stole the guns, and then they returned yeah, them. And they yeah. put it back once their operation <laughs> really was a mastermind is behind this. Just to this. prove that they could do it, yeah. Um, but the real thing that casts a pallor over the whole base is the knowledge that an independent auditor from the Merrick contingent of troops is coming down here to figure out what's up with the murder, to figure out what's going on with the guns, and to inspect the men here to make sure that you're all loyal. People could lose their jobs, people could be arrested for treason, people could die at the words of this person coming. And no one knows who this Captain Leonia is. No one's ever heard of this woman. Hold on a sec, how do you spell Leonia? Sorry. Well, Leo... Nia. Leonia. And okay. she's the one, uh, the the inspector? Yes, she is a Merrick uh, mech warrior and tank captain. She's capable of doing both. She's coming down in her hover tank to inspect the local area and uh, inspect your competence and readiness level. Just to make sure you guys are okay. I mean, there was a death, right? A death has mm -hmm. to be investigated, and also the fraud, the guns disappearing, the guns reappearing. And behind all of these strange occurrences, sitting locked in a locker somewhere, so that hopefully no one will find it, a painting with the words Truth Six is hidden somewhere on the base that, if discovered, is going to raise a hell of a lot of questions. Louis, who doesn't know anything about most of these except the murder, is pretty confident. Like, we're probably going to find who's responsible for the guns. <laughs> sure. I'm yeah. sure Pascal and Raoul well, are on it. Well, I mean, we've assigned Raoul to figure that out, that very test. Yeah, so. exactly. He's head of the investigation. Yeah. And Pascal knows what Raoul did, but yeah. Louis doesn't. <laughs> Uh, but yes. You, you tell me I, what you guys want to do at this point before Leonia arrives. Nothing is an acceptable answer to that question. Um, are, do if, we? If are you we don't think there's base? any, sorry, are we back at base? Yes. You okay. spend several hours after the hurricane subsides, getting back to the base. 
as I mentioned, things are crazy everywhere. Your technical advisor, your contractee who repairs your mechs is just clicking her tongue, looking over all these damaged mechs that you brought back in. Uh, she's very upset. That is the chief Aztec Joanna Tarascon just... Yeah. Puts her hands on her hips, shakes her finger at all these mechs. Is she She's a problem I will, like, Pascal will truly ignore such things. That's, that's what <laughs> Pascal will do. Um, what he's going to focus on are the more important things. Is the paperwork in order? Have we moved things in such a way? Have we put the, the you know, the uh, the dirty room in order and, and hidden things nicely under the bed in, before mom comes home? Um, <laughs> um, now, when you um, say put the paperwork in order, do you mean the after-action battle report for this fight, or do you mean about the fraud case that you discovered about the guns? I so I've assigned Raul to do the investigation, so the investigation work will be there. I think uh, we can assign Louis through delegation to give the battle report for what took place, reminding Great. him of the increased escalation. Uh, by the by, the enemy's culture, uh, overreacting to simple words, certainly, such as a loss of of memory of a name. Uh, maybe we can obscure that a little bit, um, and then he himself In is going to focus. In the heat of battle, who knows what could really be said? He didn't like our pronunciation. They're incredibly racist people. <laughs> yeah, that's oh what we're going to go God. with. <laughs> Nationalistic pa zeal. For for yeah. Pascal, it's going to so. What I'm thinking, AP, here is something in the realm of... So, here's what Louis doesn't do well. Um, and th this is determined by the rule set we, we are playing in. His charisma is eight. Sure. He's terrible at oh, socialization. Pascal. Yeah, sorry. I keep saying Louis because I was going to choose Louis before you chose Louis. And that's why... I'd... I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. It makes sense that that would be the, the go-forward French name that everyone chooses. Um, but... Um, so for Pascal, the, the thing that Pascal is terrible at is charisma. That being said, he has leadership, he has bureaucracy, he has business, and he has stewardship. I want to do. I want to use those, and he's got a very high intelligence and very high wisdom. I want to put the brain. The brain doesn't necessarily have to be. If we do enough work ahead of time, maybe we can um, make things less painful when she arrives. Put it that way. If you want to do steward. To literally have the base be cleaned up, silverware set out at all the tables, yep. kid gloves on. If you want to be the guy that makes this base look not just functional, but like society-wise in a way that no one has done before, I think stewardship with wisdom is the role to make here. So 2d6 oh. plus the oh. bonuses you have for either of those. Let's let's do the regional manager thing here. Regional manager is coming uh, into town. We need to keep before the before you <laughs> before you do. Uh, uh, are we supposed to pick our goals for this session? Uh so it's a battle session. So you get the XP for winning the battle. Understood. Nice. You're gonna get 500 XP for winning the battle here. All right, well, hey. I'm rolling. Here we go. Hey, there we go. Oh, I, I got a 15 wisdom as well. Okay, so that's a plus one. All right, so so your 12. total is do you? So how many points do you have in stewardship? Uh, let me just check. It might just be one. Okay, it's just one. Yeah. Twelve is still more than good enough. Look, this place looks fantastic. You assign some uh, like noble-born sergeant to get out there. You probably assign the, the sergeant that we've met and barely talked to, who's always suffering, Banner Sergeant Charles Martin. You get him like dressed up in a dress uniform. He's like running a white glove over everybody's rifle. He's making sure all these motherfuckers have their dress uniforms. He's making sure everyone has flushed their toilet in their room, uh, which is apparently a problem among soldiers. Uh, your base is transforming over the course of several hours from a place that didn't have doors when you arrived to a place where someone is whitewashing paint over all of the graffiti and damaged areas just to give a uniform look to the place. No one is going to think this is a social scene, but it is certainly fancier than the average barracks. 
That'll do. That'll do. Honestly, now. I think that was a fantastic roll. Oh, yeah. Mark, I have bad news for you. I need a security intelligence roll for you to hide your crimes. Okay. Well, I was going to do it in a different way. Okay, you tell me how you want to do it. Oh, well, he was going to uh, begin his investigation by uh, going through uh, and uh, doing a number of interviews and interrogations of people. Uh, and through his, uh, let's call it a persuasive uh, interview, uh, where he is basically suggesting and putting forth ideas of, where did you see, um, where have you seen, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Alexander? Ernst Zimmer? No, oh, Ernst Zimmer. Uh, around. Oh my god, uh, you're gonna fucking sigh off Zimmer? Have you seen talking to some, some odd, you know, some, some of the, 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 uh, you know, some of the, the natives, as it were? Okay. Any conversations that might be suspicious and kind of lead them into believing uh, this story that Ernst Zimmer is a traitor. Now look, there Why? are big rewards if you're successful here, but if you fail, it's going to be bad for you. I know. Okay. Charisma. Persuasion. Charisma and persuasion. Well, here is the fun bit. I have a charisma yeah. of 14. So that's plus, plus one. one. And I have... Two levels of persuasion. So that's also a plus one. So a plus two in total. Okay. Let's go. Let's see it. You don't, course, you don't even need to roll that well. Double check the roll document. Okay. Yes. Oh, nice. What is with your guys' rolls tonight? That's, that's a 12. 12. <laughs> <sighs> this is literally we, Rahul's thing. This is what he does. He we keep it. cutting... Poison from Has Been Hotel is playing for some reason as we keep cutting between <laughs> scenes of you like someone is writing something down in a document of what they remember and then you're like in their ear and you're like but wasn't it Zimmer there? And then we cut yeah. to Zimmer like cleaning the inside of his hunchback innocently just like <laughs> cleaning all the vomit out he's just like man I'm so glad I get to work with all of my new friends you know what? No one's been a better friend to me than Commander Rahul. And we cut back to you like, <laughs> I think he did it. <laughs> you have solidly, in the course of several hours, managed to convince the whole base that if Zimmer didn't do it, then he probably knows who did do it. Because yep. for some reason, everyone remembers Zimmer being everywhere. And have you heard about Zimmer? Crazy stuff. <laughs> I heard Zimmer All right. was the one that gave. Oh, oh fuck. I forgot your character's name, Thomas. I'm sorry. It's Louis. all right. It's Louis. Louis. I heard Zimmer was the one that gave Louis the gun. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> He's the one that approved. I heard he created the weather event that just. <laughs> yeah. I heard he's a witch who wrote his name in the Book of the Devil. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Louie, now that all this f fucking whisper campaign is done, what are we having you do again? Um, I think uh, as part of my duties, uh, I've been asked to write the after action report, which I do. Um, but I think uh, as part of what I want to do for preparing for the auditor, I want to either A, <gasps> Um, try and make sure our communications array are, like, up to snuff despite the typhoon. Typhoon? Despite the monsoon. Um, or other than that, just make sure that we're ready to achieve our strategic objective. Which is, I think at the moment, wait here until we're told to head north. So, the thing is, is the commander of this base is supposed to be a go-getter self-starter who uh, is, you, you're not ordered on paper to rampantly loot the countryside, but it is encouraged you bring resources back to the homeland. Because Indeed. telling you you should loot the countryside would be illegal. Yes, but encouraging it and saying we should uh, do a more grassroots campaign 
Uh, yellow yeah. brick roading it. That's the that's the yeah, expression. Yeah, yeah. However, the commanders of this base have traditionally been so deeply involved in their own thing that there has not been any looting. And in fact, as you're you run a truly routine check just to make sure all the communications are up. You triple check your work to make sure that what was the name of the secret agent? The Night Fox? The Night Fox. Night Fox. Hadn't infiltrated you. Oh, I love how everybody just keeps saying Night Fox. <laughs> Night Fox. <laughs> Sinister. Um, you are triple checking your work when you get another communication. It is a local message from the magistrate. Uh, the magistrate's office from a woman named Wen Hu, who is looking to communicate with someone by the name of Louis Gabriel in order to set up a date between the two of you. Why? Um, I you were mad. If you recall, the magistrate recall. asked the I magistrate asked for a profile, and your profile was given to them, and they're like, okay, well, we're going to find someone that matches his profile and get marriage set up. I do recall that. Um, okay. This young woman is messaging your base asking for when she can meet with you to go on a date. A chaperoned I, date. A chaperoned be clear. date. Of a course. very chaste chaperoned date. Um, I have a question um, based on if I can make a roll. Would it be. Does this mean that I have to marry this lady? And if it does. After does it one mean date? I don't, know these, I don't no. know what these people are up about, and yes, it kind of is. It's gentlemen of the list. <laughs> I did I did want it to be more Bridgerton than not, but we've been so busy stabbing each other in the back, sometimes literally, I that we haven't had time to do Bridgerton. Front. We're um, way too burn notice to be Bridgerton. <laughs> which Burn Notice is one of my favorite shows. Um but I think Louis. Hopefully will you respond. mean the early seasons and not the last one, because the last yeah. one was a little wacky. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean um, that's the best Louis... so that's how USA shows work, but Indeed. Uh but Louis will respond to the message saying, Yes, this is Louis Gabrielson. Uh matters are complicated right now, however, I will respond with a date and time at your earliest convenience. <laughs> Nearly instantly, you get a reply from when who that, or you know, all of the communications you've received from the magistrate so far involve titles. Degree, <laughs> I guess, but it involves like the ti her title, the title of the person she's sending the message to, pompousness. You send your message and you, and you get an immediate reply from when who saying, "Oh, I caught you live. I see. I." Didn't realize you were... Okay, well, I look forward to hearing more from you about when we can get together. I understand you must be busy. I heard that there was an incident with the river. End of message. Indeed so. I'm looking forward to meeting with you too. Uh, I shall send more information along shortly. Madam Wenhu. Uh, signing out. <laughs> Okay. As um, you walk I away, you get another bang immediately, and it just says, "Just, just miss is fine." Very well. Uh, I think Louis is actually going to speak to uh, speak to Pascal. <laughs> now I want to um, know how you approach Pascal because I feel like there's a slight sense of panic going on right now, but that might just be me Bridgertoning. <laughs> uh, uh, is he in his office preparing business? Seems reasonable to me. I, uh, I think as the mm, uh, as the commanding officer's uh, bridge or something is occupied by Pascal, he would hear a knock on the door. Enter. Uh, the door opens, revealing Louis as he comes in, and he says, "Commander, I have." A few questions, I think, of an unorthodox nature. Um, what sort of questions? So, previously, when Rahul was the commander of the Lance, uh, matters were arranged in which various data was sent to the magistrate across the bridge, uh, now guarded. 
um, to organize some manner of courtship in preparation for marriage. And I've recently been contacted by, I believe, the person who was chosen for this, Madam Wen Hu. I don't know, politically speaking, what the best course of action is. I'm just letting you know about this so you're not blindsided when there's been communication with members of a non-aligned foreign polity. Also, I wasn't quite sure when my duties would free me up to visit if necessary. Data? Or what? Who approved this data and, and what, what sort of data was sent? Uh, the transaction was approved by the commander at the time and the data was what I personally curated. Uh, physical uh, and health history and pretty much that. Uh, notice of employment too. Did the health hi history include our late comrade. No, it was just mine. I see. Apparently, I mm, apparently I gave some kind of impression to the. Hold on, I wrote down her name. I'm sorry. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, I apparently made some kind of impression with the magistrate Kuijan Lu. No, AP. As a frequent studier of the list, I have to ask you, how much of this is, it, how much, of, like, is this a deviation from that? Because this isn't, this is like marrying a, a local, like, this isn't like, right? The list is internal to the magistrate. Yeah. Even, and, and to some extent, the local Merrick forces that are attacking the planet that you are auxiliary to, like, you guys are joining your allies in attacking this planet but they're the ones leading the charge and they're the ones that get the planet if you're successful right that's why the campaign of widespread looting is going on because anything you don't take back with you now you're never going to have access to um uh, yeah. they have kind of joined in on it but that's because they're a free society and the women there are deeply flattered that men are chasing after them with such augustness and and bravado um and they've integrated well the men in the merrick are not interested in the list at all because for them it's truly degrading to be like oh this f this man meat flesh doesn't have blue enough blood uh this thing with the capellas they may not even know the list exists right they're, they're, whatever game they're playing doesn't involve the list. Mm hmm. Yep, that's fair. Um, I, I think I'll look to Louis first and be like, You're sharing this with me simply because you don't want me to be blindsided by it? Yeah. Have... And also because I'm not quite sure what the appropriate etiquette is in this response. Obviously. The Magistrate is not an ally and is only True. not hostile because I believe he does not expect that we will succeed in conquest. I think she's flat out told you that that's the case. <laughs> yes. It's not, it's not a suspicion. She's told you that that's what's going to happen. Well, she told me, but I still suspect it. <laughs> Um, Louis also says, besides, the previous, uh, or rather the last communication we received from them, uh, did lead to our encounter with the monk and the village under duress. I'm not certain what her game is, but I do believe this is part of it, and also I'm not quite sure how to refuse without sounding churlish. So you do intend to refuse, then? I have no idea. Um, the long-term prospects of someone on this planet, whether we are successful or otherwise in our wartime endeavors, is questionable at best. Hey, AP, also, how uh, appropriate is it to an annul, uh, annul a marriage um, after a certain amount of time? See, Pascal's thinking deep operative right here, uh, if we do this right. Um, um, what is uh, what does that look like from from a 
Well, the realm of no there are several magic. questions. Under what culture is this marriage being pursued? Mm. Right. And I, I would assume... It, if Jesus it is done in the Capellan fashion, the socially higher ranking person would be the superior and divorce would be up to their credit. And if this young woman is a noble woman, she almost certainly socially outranks your the good man, man, Louis. Uh, if you do it under Merikian laws, then divorce is no fault. And if you do it under Madristrian laws, the woman, again, makes that decision. Although, under Madristrian laws, a noblewoman can choose any... One one time, pick any one man, has to get him, no matter what happens, no divorce, not happening. She can't, she can't keep a harem of men like that, but a noblewoman. Now, that only applies to Magistrian noblewoman. So it wouldn't lunch. apply. If, when, who was noble, she would not apply under that law. You're you're a nobleman. You don't know what would happen if two commoners wanted and one of them wanted to get a divorce in the magistracy. It literally has never occurred to you, right? Would you like to consult your legal department in the military? <laughs> I I have think them it's get you a memo. I, I think please, it's, it's please, too complicated. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think it's too complicated. I think he's gonna say, um, you know, Louis. There's one simple way to solve this. Be attached Take to someone dad. else. Betroth right. someone. Court them. I see. Admittedly, most of the, shall we say, eligible women I have met are involved in the game of the list, or I have killed, I suppose. Actually, well, I wasn't sure if the Night Fox were married. The Night Fox. The Night Fox. <laughs> We need the equipped. <laughs> um, <laughs> Louis, Louis pulls out when you mention the list. He pulls out his own. He's probably got one of those old like clipboards, you know, from the '80s or whatever. Uh, he's flipping through it. He's like, "Yeah, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! This is the BattleTech <laughs> universe. Those are still new and fresh." Oh right, sorry, I apologize. In the 3030s, those are modern technology. Yeah, right. <laughs> He's gonna go through the list and he's gonna be like, if I have it right, you're number 26 right now? That should be correct. Though, actually, would the death of Alexander at number 24 oh. be up to 25? <laughs> that has not, the new version of the list has not been printed yet. Understood. Uh, in that case, Louis will say, that is correct, and not mention the death thing. Well, I I'm certain that, um, we can put some kind of promotion campaign out there for you if you if your concern is that you're going to marry too low. Uh, perhaps something to do with your involvement here at this um, uh, this this whole uh, weather event. Your response to it. We can show some footage. Maybe produce a report. I can I can uh, I can see to that for you if you wish. Commander, while that is a very creative way of dealing with it, with all due respect, my interest in this is to do my job and to do it well. I want to comport myself well in this war and retire after it's done with a number of sea bills and live out the rest of my life in relative peace. Then I can worry about romance. As it is, this is secondary at best and mostly a distraction. <laughs> you know, it's it's funny that you'd mention that because you're never going to deal with war without this. You're from the magistracy. This is how things are done. Louis. I suppose that's true. I admit I didn't know all of that when I bought the commission. Still, I think things have worked out well so far. I think you have a good idea, but I'll wait to see if there's a more quiet way that I can turn matters down. One way or the other, this wasn't an immediate marriage proposal, simply courtship leaning towards going that direction. Jesus, it's a first date. It's just a first date, I know, but they lead to other things. Yeah. Um, yeah. But... Hearing, the, hearing this, he'll say, oh, <laughs> I, 
A date? Why? Yes. Louis, go on the date. Find out more about... This will help us all. But what if she tries to kill me? <laughs> well. Kill her right back. <laughs> it's a risk you'll have to take. For the Very squad. Well. For the squad, yes, Commander. All right, I believe that's fine. Uh, with that being said, is there an appropriate time I can take a leave from my duties to go and do this? I imagine after the auditor's visit. It's probably wise. In that case, I'll find a space in my schedule. Thank you. <sighs> Rahul. You receive a note from a corporal that someone has a point-to-point uh, -point phone message and would like to speak with you at your earliest convenience. All right. He'd make the necessary uh, actions for it and then prepare to receive the call. You pick up the line and you hear someone say, Is this Mr. Rahul? This is Ruhu Chesting, yes. Dr. Jack Manley here. Just wanted to touch base real quick. You're you're a real number one. I'm a real number one. From a 10 to a 10, I just thought maybe we'd have a talk real quick. I understand you're having some problem keeping order down there, and I wanted to lend my authority to you. You have time ah. for a quick chat? Of course, Jack. Always for another fellow of the magistrates. magistrates and i think that's our ending scene there is i i want to imagine you're in a swivel chair and you you're like always for another fellow and you swivel it around while manly is like that's it i'm gonna get i'm pascal larue passes me for number one i'm gonna turn his own guys against him that's what's happening right now is game of thrones but a game of the list Jokes on him. We're, we're switching genres again. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Dr. Jack Manley. I love it. My arch enemy. Arch enemy right there. Yeah. He's a nice guy, but you've you've uh you've upset him now. And it's time. <laughs> All it took was you passing him once for him to go from I'm a calm, collected person to it's time to begin the cook. You just made an enemy <sighs> for life. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, for sure. Well, so, any closing thoughts here? Uh, we get 500 XP from the battle. The battle. Yep. And we're good there. Yeah. Did, did uh, we get I any think, from last session? That's a good we didn't question. really do the... I don't think we did like the... We, we forgot to do like the mission stuff i think last session Could you guess. know what we'll just go ahead and give you another 500 then thank you so Ooh. much that's okay what? it's my birthday i um, have continuously forgotten to give people experience in this system which is wild because i'm running three different shows on it <laughs> <laughs> um Honestly, I think we've gotten to a pretty good place with our characters. Uh, the backstabbing is now going outward instead of, like, to the rest of us. <laughs> um, except Ernst Zimmer. Ernst Zimmer is going to fucking get executed for treason, and it's going- he- he doesn't deserve it. <laughs> Alright. Ah, that was fun. I was like this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, when right. are we good for the next session? Middle of next month, do you think? I think so. Yeah, that should like be. The 18th or the 25th. It should be fine. I got to double check. I might have a, a weird Sunday in there for an event. Sure. To find out. Um, but we can do one or the other. So like either that one or the one right after. Yeah. Uh, one month from now would be the 11th, but yes. We'll figure it out. Somewhere in that range. Well, yeah. We'll figure it out. That would be good. 
I think for outros, rather than talk about who we are, I think what we should do is say which Baldur's Gate 3 character we think we are. Gale. We think we are, or we want to be? <laughs> I'll leave that to your decision. I like how you Either said way. Gale. Like, he isn't actually just, like, some sort of incredibly pompous genocidal maniac. Hey! I can, I can fix this. Extended. I can solve this problem <laughs> that I created. Exactly. I can solve it through the power of hubris. Uh, yeah, I'm Gale. I listen. I was just being polite to Gale, and he was like, "Wanna be gay lovers?" And I was like, "Bro, I was literally okay. just being minimum level of polite to you, man. How easy are you, Jesus?" He's gotten less horny in the has he? Yeah, has he? Because they were too. They were. They were all too, too into it. <laughs> I don't believe you. I only started playing like a month and a half ago, so this is the only Gale I've ever known. Oh, in, that never case, mind, that's yes, just Gale. in that case, that's baseline horny. Yeah. Mark, Baldur's Gate 3 character. Either oh. the one you want to be like or the one that you think you are. Okay. Uh, well, I'd say I'd want to be, to be Will, uh, but I'm probably Gale. The Blade of Frontiers? Yeah, he's cool. I he wish he was more evil, but he's cool. You just want to have your cake and also eat all the tiefling children. I really do. I really wish he had like a, a, a proper evil run in his story when you uh, choose him as a character. But he just, you just fucking murder Karlek as soon as you meet her. I don't really know. Uh, don't tell me, yeah, even if that's true. Yeah, that doesn't matter. But yeah, that's me. Also, I'm Mark. I'm, I, I think we're doing our outros. I'm not really sure. We are. This are our, our outro. Look, people will know who we are. I'm at, we're, we're Baldur's Gate 3 persona typing. We have uh, a Discord, of course. Uh, a link should be uh, in a number of places. YouTube channel, Twitch, yada, yada, yada. Come join us. Lots of fun stuff on there. Memes, shitposting, uh, different games are running, and announcements on whenever we go live, and new projects. I've been me. Signing off. Bob. All right, I'm oh, gonna three. I'm gonna say something, and then I'm gonna add some caveats to this. So I'm gonna choose Minsk. Why? Because I've never mm. played the game, and I have no idea who any of these characters are. So I figure you can mm. tell me how wildly off my guess is, or how wildly accurate it is. But that's that's. I what... can see Minsk. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I have I'm no there. idea. Literally no idea. I chose a name. I looked it up on Google real quick. So. Oh, okay, this, I remember him from earlier Baldur's Gate, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he was yes. in Baldur's okay. Gate 2, I think. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Not at all, then, actually, but I'll, I'll take it, so. <laughs> yeah. uh, I thought the name sounded familiar. Yeah. Uh, Are all the I'm characters... I'm very sorry, but as of, uh, as of right now, uh, someone has come to do some handiwork and fix the shower. I am very sorry, I will need to help out. Oh, okay, let's, right. uh, let's go ahead and wrap her up, if you're okay with it, AP. Let's so get the thing. Thanks Fantastic. Now no one will know which Baldur's Gate character I am. Oh no. You're a Starian. The mystery. In no world. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> We're gonna end All right, but I was note. going anyway. See ya. <laughs> Take care.